So out of nowhere, I decided to dive headfirst into Rust and make a game. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? But here's the catch. The game has to be about Rust. No, not that kind of Rust. This kind of Rust. Yeah, well, what did you expect from the guy that brought you the game about going to play Go written in Go? I am pretty sure there are more game engines than there are Rust game devs, because Jesus Christ, what is going on here? Baby is the only one I have heard of before, so that is the one I'll be going with. Got my Hello World running in Baby, and I was feeling pretty confident, I thought it would be smooth sailing from here. Hey, what is that foreshadow doing there? Let's just say learning Rust was a bit of a roller coaster. After I got the basics down, I decided to further practice my Rust skills with some lead code questions. During this time, I came across this weird issue, which I am so glad it happened, because these series of events perfectly summarize my Rust experience. In this basic lead code question, I had to populate a new array with people's names and heights together. I could grab their heights all fine, but for their names, I had to use this clone function. And I actually didn't want to show you guys this long ass lead code answer. To make my point, I was going to show you guys this neat little code snippet. But to my surprise, the code snippet actually worked. Why? Because these variables aren't strings, of course, they are string slices, which can be borrowed, which means there is no problem in this code. But when I make the variable strings explicitly, wait, what the fuck? It still works? Because due to Rust's ownership model, we are transferring the ownership of the string to the new one. So in order to actually demonstrate the problem, I need to do this, where the Rust compiler finally complains stating this. I mean, man. With my newfound confidence in my Rust skills, I jumped right back into Baby. To start off, I found this random cute crab image and I successfully rendered him on the screen. Obviously, the next thing to do was to get him moving. So after giving him the movable component and listening to the keyboard inputs, he was moving around the screen all fine. For the next step, well, Metal's Rust went wet. So I implemented the rain area. Started with getting a rain gift from the internet then stealing the sprite sheet code from the baby examples, I couldn't figure out how to use multiple frames, so like they did in the example, I plopped the images next to each other, which of course didn't work properly, the last frame was weirdly white, also existing frames were cropped, but then I got a single rain frame instance working, but I needed many more to cover the area, so when I decided to instantiate multiple, I got this weird borrowing error, so I just moved the code inside the loop, I mean this is the best solution right? Wait, what? And with the final iteration of the code, the rain was working. I was actually losing my mind in the rest of this project's development. I am not even kidding, I was going to quit. But then I didn't want to because I had already spent so much time. So instead, I suffered through. So you better watch how I plow through this mountain of unbearable shit called developing in Rust, okay? The next stage was implementing the metal pieces that will rust in the game. I wanted to crop the sprites of the clean and the rusted metal together to show how much rusted each piece was, and I couldn't get this to work for the life of me. So I finally copied the original baby mesh cropping code, and after removing all the parts that I don't need, I was able to crop the clean metal sprites. And actually a bunch of the modifications baffled me at first, since I had to write angles in radians, so don't let anybody tell you that your high school trick course was useless. The overlaid rusted sprites had some scaling issues because rust moment, and after ripping my hair out of my head, I got the cropping working correctly. Along with some upgrades to the rain sprites, this is how the metal pieces look like with the random positions and amounts of rusting. I wanted to rust the metal pieces over time, but they weren't being picked up by the curie, which was a problem for updating them over time. Turns out, I wasn't populating the metal pieces collection. Classic. At times during this development, Rust was not satisfied, not okay with the query, Complained that I couldn't borrow time, but Father Time did finally answer my prayers and I emerged on the other side with working metal pieces that rusted over time. But for this to be a game and not the world's most boring rusting simulator, I had to make the metal stop rusting below a certain point outside the rain. With this change in the code, the pieces weren't rusting below the rain like they should. The next thing to do is to be able to move these metal pieces out of the rain. How f hard do you think it was to make my crab grab a piece and move the piece together with the player while it was being held? Like honestly, this would be a trivial task to complete in Unity, but for some reason I literally lost my shit trying to get this to work. After finally getting the transforms to move, they were all free folding as a test, so don't worry about that one. Next step, I was able to hold entities, at least the scaffold was there. I confirmed object holding was working by making only the held object fall, but then, because I was unable to make the project track the player's transform while it was being held, I just made it move with the keyboard inputs with the exact speed with the player. Yes, sue me. I'll be in jail watching my code work no problem. In order to give the player a goal to strive towards, I added a player score. And let the player actually see the score, I had to implement some UI elements. After copying one of Baby's examples, I was freaking out about why it wasn't working. 
But turns out, don't worry, just the phone files were missing. Once I edit the files, the phones were showing up. I implemented changing the score, initially set to 0, but then being changed to 10 for testing. This is a huge moment. Don't make fun of me, okay? Then, I made it so that the saved metal pieces rewarded points once they were destroyed, based on how not rusted they were. And here is the score values correctly updating with the saved metal pieces. And that's it. Now you can play a game about rusting written in Rust. But we aren't quite done yet. Here are my brief thoughts on the Go vs Rust debate titled Go Rules, Rust Rules. Ahem. <laughs> Comparing the two, I have to say, Go was a lot more fun to use. The errors made more sense, and the language itself was a lot more intuitive. Even though I didn't have prior experience in languages like C++, where pointers and all of that matter, Go felt more approachable. Rust, on the other hand, gave me a headache. It was annoying as hell, and even the resources online were fickle as I battled my way through making this game. In the world of high-performance backend languages, I would definitely prefer Golang over Rust. Sorry, Mr. Primetime. Thanks for watching my suffering. Hope to see you next time.